Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me today for this travel talk, our special Canada Day edition. I'm Diane Cook, the owner and principal travel designer for Seven Seas to Sea Travel. I specialize in not so usual and bucket list travel adventures. On this special Canada Day edition of Travel Talks, let's see how many provinces and territories you can name and place on the map. This Canada song it will help and it's going to stick with you. P.I. New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and Labrador, Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, and there are more B.C., Alberta, Saskatchewan, Northwest Territories, Nana, but Yukon, Nova Scotia, P.I., New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and Labrador, Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, and there are more B.C., Alberta, Saskatchewan, Northwest Territories, Nana, but Yukon, ten provinces, three territories, Eastern Maritimes, Western Prairies, provinces, ten territories, three, started all over with Nova Scotia and PI, New Brunswick and Newfoundland and Labrador, Quebec. Ontario, Manitoba, and there are more BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Northwest Territories, none of but Yukon. Catchy, but it'll stay with you and you'll remember. Always your best source for travel advice and advisories, visit Canada. Uh, travelgc.ca. This will give you all the information you need to know for up-to-date COVID travel quarantine restrictions and crossing provincial borders, travel abroad, returning to Canada, to register as a Canadian abroad, something I always suggest my clients do, and a recommend consent letter for children traveling abroad, also, if you ever wanted to apply for a Nexus card, this is a good resource where you would start. And you also want to know what you can bring home to Canada so you don't end up on that TV show, Border Security. Contact an embassy or consulate when you were away. This is the place you would come to resource that information. So where can I go? This interactive map is a perfect tool. You can click on each province or territory, gives you up-to-date information, who can go, what the restrictions are, all that sort of thing. This is the resource I have used to uh, compile our information for today's presentation. I came across this Facebook post by the Vancouver Airport letting people know they are excited to start to reopen again and setting up expectations that the airport experience will most likely be different than what you've experienced pre-COVID and is a great reminder, whether flying or driving across even provincial borders, what we need to know and what is required. Always pack your patience and be informed. So today's off the beaten path and bucket list adventures, we're going to start off in Nova Scotia, just like the song, Nova Scotia Pia. Everyone who travels from outside Atlantic Canada, including if you're traveling through Nova Scotia to another destination, needs to apply to travel to Nova Scotia by completing the safe check-in form. People who are fully vaccinated 14 days before arriving in Nova Scotia don't need to self-isolate, but you do need to complete the form. There is so much to see and do in Nova Scotia, and that is why it's on so many people's bucket lists. The seafood, the wine, the beaches, the history, the Bay of Fundy tides. 
cycling and walking, the Rum Runners Trail, music, Cape Breton, puffins, whales, and the off the beaten path wilderness lodges and resorts to thrill. I have a little video here for you just to give you the highlights. I will be hosting a small group walking, whining, and dining tour of Nova Scotia, June 19 to 26 of 2022. And I invite you to consider joining me. If Nova Scotia is on your bucket list, we are going to experience everything in comfort and walking, whining, and dining every day. We will check off those bucket list items. Let me know if you're interested. I would love to have you come join us. Over to Prince Edward Island. So currently, pre-travel approval process, process, you have to apply for a PEI pass. Until July 28th, those planning to travel to PEI from outside of Atlantic Canada must apply for pre-travel approval under one of the travel streams. You have to see the website for more information. So PEI, so much more than Anne of Green Gables. The golf, the festivals, the beaches, and cottage rentals. And celebrity chef Michael Smith and his wife have these two unique hotels with the Inn at Bay Fortune, and they've now added Inn at Fortune Bridge. And for all the foodies, an authentic culinary adventure from farm to fire to fork is a must. So I like to try and include a stay with Michael Chef or at least a dinner for all of my clients wanting to travel through PEI. New Brunswick is currently open to all travelers from Canada who have had at least one dose of their vaccines. They are welcome to enter New Brunswick with no isolation requirements. So some of the highlights, just a couple to name a few in New Brunswick. Of course, the classic elegance of the Algonquin Resort at St. Andrews by the Sea is a welcome retreat on any road trip out east. And of course, one of the highlights in the area is the Fundy Coastal Drive, which is beautiful, a scenic drive that stretches all along the southern shore of New Brunswick. Over to Labrador and Newfoundland now. On July 1st, the Together Again plan comes into effect and will require all travelers to complete their new travel form. It can only be completed within the three days 
prior to your travel date. Fully vaccinated travelers will have no testing or self-isolation requirements. Now for Newfoundland and Labrador, one of the most off the beaten places that encompasses Newfoundland in the most precious of ways is the Fogo Island Inn. An island off an island, and this National Geographic video unfolds it so well. So I hope you enjoy it. The best way, or the only way to experience life is to be comfortable with death. Oh, I was The only way to experience any sense of control is to let go. And so it's this lovely ability to live in the seeming contradiction. I would like to think that every person who comes to Fogo Island has an experience that is essentializing say that they feel reawakened in themselves somehow or given back to themselves it's not a place you come if you want to be indulging yourself in material things it's a place that you will come if you want to actually strip away some of the material things to get to some of the essential things that are hard to get to in your everyday life I think it's got this lovely quality of being able to disorient you, to kind of help you reorient in a way that's more part of the natural world. We built the inn to help make a contribution to cultural and economic resilience for Fogo Island. It seemed in thinking about where we've come from, and thinking about what we have as an island to offer. An inn seemed like the most logical way to achieve both. And if you're going to build an inn, well, you need beds to lie in and goods to lie under and chairs to sit on and food to eat. Well, all of these things were opportunities to put bits of ourselves and bits of what we know into each and every one of these things. An inn is an opportunity to knit together a whole bunch of things that might have otherwise been lost. quality of our everyday life isn't so much impacted by some big idea or something you believe in. It's these tiny little details and nuances of maybe somebody wasn't as gentle as they could have been in some gesture or some little detail of something that could have been beautiful that is actually mediocre makes you sad. And so what we try to do is not miss any opportunities to put joy in the details, put love in the details, and most importantly, put Fogo Island in the details. The paradox, and it is a paradox, is who you are as a person. You don't discover that sitting in a room all by yourself. You discover that in relationship, in relationship to nature, in relationship to the other. And so we try to be thoughtful about that. And hopefully, and I think I see this in the people who come here, when they leave, they have a different perspective on relationships, not just with each other, but with anything. In a time that we are a little bit confused as human beings about our relationship to the planet, our relationship to the past, our relationship to the future, I think Fogo Island is a really great place to experience that on a smaller scale. It's more approachable. It's a place to reconnect with the most important things, the natural. And from that, yourself. Absolutely amazing. 
and truly one of the most unique lodges in the world, no doubt about it. Over to Quebec. So travel between Ontario and Quebec is open again without any limitations right now. Some areas like Tremblant and Montebello are so popular this year, they are just about sold out for the entire season or very limited uh, space available still yet. There are more options though. So just reach out to me and I will help you find something. Um, for example, this uh, beautiful uh, Manoir Hovi, which is on the shores near North Hatley, Quebec. It's about 75 minutes from Montreal and it's along the Rue des Vins that will thrill wine lovers and Epicureans with four different routes for road trips or cycling and 20 different vineyards, 21 amazing restaurants and a myriad of activities to enjoy. And then of course, charming View Quebec with a special stay at the Auberge Saint Antoine, this lends for an easy visit out to the Charlevoix region and the Beaupre coast. Such a beautiful spot for this Relais and Chateau property under, this, under the gaze of the Fairmont and right along the waterfront. You, you know, the funicular is just back here to get up to the top. Oh, such beautiful, uh, quaint, old surroundings, such history on, on each cobblestone that you walk, incredible. I look forward to enjoying a little vacation here myself in a couple of weeks. And over to Ontario. So the perfect way to keep your bubble and enjoy an incredible family adventure this summer is with Le Boat, one of my favorite um, secret weapons that I like to let my clients know about um, in Smith Falls, Ontario, sort of between on Kingston and Ottawa. This is where you would go and you pick up this beautiful yacht and they have created them to be so simple to operate, no boating experience required at all. They teach you everything you need to know they give you a 24 seven phone number that you can call in case you forget how to turn on the oven or you, uh, you've run into some issue and you need some help. They are there for you and it's very simple. The training is ad adequate and they set you loose. And, and once you go through one of the uh, canals, you realize, oh, I can do this. And, and you just gain your, um, your confidence and off you go. They also have everything marked so well. If you're traveling through a larger body of water, they have buoys on either side and they give you all these catchy little phrases like red and green, stay in between. So, so that you know exactly where you should be aiming and what you can do. They also have excellent maps. Um, you can't get lost. It's, it's so well done. And um, they let you know everything you need to know. You don't drive at night, you park. Um, there's places all along to dock. They let you know all of this information. And, you know, you can bring your own bikes, you can bring your own stand up paddle boards and kayaks if you want, and, and just enjoy being out on the water. On board, they have a barbecue on the top. And this is the most incredible place for al fresco dining. Oh my goodness, just my favorite part of the whole ship. Now they do have, uh, when I was on last year, we had some rainy days. And so they have the kitchen area in here, just fabulous. You can also drive the boat from right down in here. Um, the kitchen had a three burner stove, an oven, two fridges with freezer compartments and so well equipped. They even had a cheese grater. Um, we, we, they had given us a four bedroom, four bathroom uh, yacht and so it could hold easily 10 people. Um, so we had a lot of room. There were only four of us on this beautiful four bedroom, four bathroom vessel. And uh, we just had a wonderful adventure out on the ocean, on the water, sorry. Um, 
So you definitely, if it's something you are interested in, let me know. I think that they might have some availability still this summer. Ontario uh, getaways as well. If you have been searching for private cottage rentals, that sort of thing online, you will have noticed they're virtually non-existent anymore. People have been making reservations for the summer for a year now, and uh, they are very, very heavily booked. Um, there are still opportunities though, so if you uh, are looking for something, let me know. Also, the Resorts of Ontario, their guide, I believe, just dropped today, and here's the digital link. You can uh, take a look online, and they have all kinds of resorts, fishing resorts, um, spa seekers, golfers, outdoor explorers, or if you're looking for a family holiday, all of that is there to find. Um, as well, some of my favorites that I select uh, or suggest to my clients, of course, uh, if they want the Muskoka areas, the JW Marriott and Lake Rosso, very excellent resort. As well, if you are a couple and you just want to get away, just the adults, uh, the Couples Resort up at Algonquin Park at the east entrance in Whitney is, is just the, the best getaway. Um, it's a beautiful little road trip to get there. The cuisine, excellent. Um, you get the Algonquin Park Park Pass during your entire stay, so you have access to all the hiking trails and everything within Algonquin Park. Just a, a, a fabulous getaway, and um, I'd love to make all of those arrangements for you. over to Manitoba. And so Manitoba fully vaccinated travelers are permitted. And while we don't often think of um, the north of Manitoba, one of uh, the best experiences I love to arrange for my clients is working with Churchill Wild and um, their walking safaris with the polar bears at the edge of the Arctic at uh, one of the three different remote eco lodges. Just an experience you will never forget. These sorts of experiences change you forever. You will, of course, feast on tundra-inspired cuisine. You'll see beluga whales and Arctic foxes, black bears, wolves, Arctic hare, moose, the northern lights, and the list goes on. This is sustainable and ethical tourism, and it is my privilege to work with these incredible suppliers. I have a video here just to give you a taste. And now we're out to beautiful British Columbia. Recreational travel in BC is allowed. And this includes for vacations. 
So they are asking that we respect the communities as some are eager for tourists to return and others are not. There's some indigenous communities in BC that are not welcoming visitors at this time yet. So you just need to refer to that map, check, see what's okay, what's not okay, and just follow the wishes. To experience the BC wild places, the Great Bear Rainforest, the Vancouver Islands wild side, Haida Gwaii, Desolation Sound and the fjords of BC, the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve, wine focused and craft beer and culinary cruises, all offers with Maple Leaf Adventures. Another of my favorite Canadian companies to work with to bring your dreams to life. You will experience safaris on these small expedition yachts with immersive adventures. These yachts hold between 12 and 20 passengers. You are able to get right into the most smallest coves, right up close and personal with nature. The expedition leaders on board bring everything to life. You understand the flora, the fauna, the history, how things work together. You know, you, we feel when you come away from these adventures, like so, so small and in, in the, the grand scheme of things, just incredible life-changing adventures. Also, some of my favorite uh, off the beaten path experiences I like to suggest to my clients as well. I couldn't decide which one to, not to take or include, so I've included both videos. Just to give you a taste, they are so different and so unique. The first is the Clayaquat Wilderness Resort. This is unique luxury glamping. Uh, fly in, just amazing. And also, I love to suggest to my clients that, especially our walkers and hikers, to get off the beaten trails with CMH, which is the Canadian Mountain Hella Hiking and Hella Skiing, uh, and their three lodges in British Columbia. Truly spectacular. <laughs>
and over to Alberta, where there are no further restrictions to travel. There's so much more to Alberta than Banff, Lake Louise, and Jasper. Of course, there's the iconic Fairmont lodges and resorts in each of those locations, and they are definitely very impressive. But they are so busy in the throngs with the crowds of busy tourists, with coaches and car rentals and, and busy. I suggest to get off the beaten path. And for my clients, if they would like to consider heading south to Kananaskis, incredible beauty all four seasons, so much you can do. Hiking, cycling, skiing, snow sports, experience still with the luxury of resort and lodge accommodation and their fabulous wine and culinary scene. A wonderful alternative. And then down to Lake Waterton on the southern border of the Alberta uh, provincial US border very special and so unique, quiet, remote, good golf, and the deers just wander all over town. There's beautiful hiking and nature is up close and personal. In the fall, this magical quiet oasis prepares for winter and all the seasonal residents leave and the remaining hundred or so year round residents are left. I was down several years ago in October and I was able to get in a final round of golf just as the, they were starting to, you know, pack up and, and get ready to close down for the season. But I learned quickly, you needed to check for bear scat, watch for rustling bushes. If the ball was in there, just leave it. You, you would see people running up to you from their golf cart with their camera to show you. This is what I just saw, a bear crossing over a green on this particular hole, just unbelievable. Also in this town, in the evenings, never mind a movie, they would all bring their lawn chairs, come together during the elk rutting season, and it became a bit of a tailgate, you know, and Everybody had a thermos and we would just sit out in the open, listening to the sounds of this rutting season. Absolutely amazing. I've never experienced anything like that anywhere in the world before. Just incredible. Over to Saskatchewan. There are no further restrictions to travel to Saskatchewan. The incredible vastness can be felt as you take time and experience this beautiful province. I think it's often overlooked because of its flat prairie landscapes. People just wanna drive and get through it and get to the mountains or drive and get through it as they're heading back to Eastern Canada. But there are beautiful badlands and thick boreal forest, sand dunes, and tens of thousands of lakes. So for my clients going to Saskatchewan, I often suggest the Elk Ridge Resort with its Canadian PGA golf course. And also one of the major playgrounds in Saskatchewan is the Cypress Hills Interprovincial Park, which they share with Alberta. And this area is so popular for camping and hiking, all the sports of every season, as well as being one of the largest dark sky preserves in the world. Ah, finally, we get to the territories. So many of us have not yet experienced the Northern Canada. So leisure travel into the Northwest Territories by non-residents is not yet permitted. But we sure can dream and we can start to plan even for this winter or next year. I have a, a unique uh, video for you just to give you some ideas.
You can surround yourself in wilderness here. One of my favorites for clients wanting to experience the Northwest Territories is the Blatchford Lake Lodge and Wilderness Resort. This fly-in lodge is mostly a year-round resort. The only time it shuts down is when the Blatchford Lake ice is melting in the spring or when the lake is freezing in the late fall so that the float plane can land safely on water or ice. This is also where Will and Kate stayed on their first Canadian tour. Off to Nunavut, this vast, oh, amount of land that so many of us have never experienced. I, I look forward to seeing it myself and I hope you do too. Vaccinated travelers, have to email ahead to complete a vaccinated traveler declaration form to request an exemption that would allow you to travel. A travel authorization letter would be sent to you and you need that letter on your arrival to Nunavut. One of my favorite adventures for clients is with my partner, Weber Arctic. Their adventures include Arctic watch discovery experiences, the ultimate Canadian Arctic expedition, um, Arctic wolf photography, beluga whale photography, biking at the Arctic. They have a private island cabin fishing excursion option. They also have a private group base camp on Baffin Island for heli assisted skiing. All of these experiences, so unique, so iconic, and we can do it all for you. I have a video for you here. Just give me a second. Here we go. I came here when I was nine years old, and uh, this has definitely become my home over the years. And uh, we take great pride in sharing this wonderful place with our guests. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a place we love. It's a place we care about deeply. And uh, it's been uh, just an honor to go spend so much time here and growing up for the past uh, 20 years. This is uh, one of the most remote corners of the world. It's on the Canadian doorstep in the Canadian hierarchy. You board our private aircraft and fly. Uh, 1,500 kilometers uh, into the high Arctic, about 800 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. You fly uh, above the tree line out to the open tundra over the Arctic Ocean, and uh, you land on, literally on the tundra, um, on a gravel airstrip uh, just near the launch. This lodge was originally built for beluga whale watching. Uh, it is one of the last beluga nurseries on the planet. There's about uh, 2,500 whales that come in every summer to nurse and molt for about six weeks. It's definitely uh, one of Mother Nature's last uh, great events or great hidden gems. And uh, we're really fortunate to have this on our doorstep at, uh, at Arctic Watch.
place that we could showcase the Arctic or give guests a glimpse of the Arctic in a, in a one week stay. Oh, and they certainly do that so well. The Weber family has also hosted and worked with National Geographic on several occasions. Um, I think most recently on the Beluga filming. Um, I think you can see it on Disney or on Nat Geo. And uh, just, just to be able to see, like this is the level of experience you have when you go and work with uh, or experience this with the suppliers that I work with. Um, so I also love to recommend to my clients um, that I partner with Quark Expeditions and their Arctic Adventure Expedition Cruise. And I actually have a small group blocked. If you would like to join me, August 15 to 23rd of 2022, I'd love to have you come along. It's the perfect package. It includes all the flights from Toronto right up to Resolute and back. Um, everything is packaged so neat and tidy. It's the perfect uh, way to experience the Arctic, tick the boxes, and it's about a 10 day adventure. And so let me know if you're interested. Love to have you come join us. I did do a travel talk with Quark a few weeks ago on this specific adventure. So if you would like to see it, just go to my YouTube channel, Seven Seas to See Travel, and you would be able to find it there, watch it, or send me an email. I'll send you the link to see. And we're on to the Yukon. So for the Yukon, fully vaccinated, uh, people may enter the Yukon without self-isolating. Some of the First Nation governments may have advisories in place again, so you just need to be sensitive to what the rules are. Wild and remote, adventure and nature seekers, this is your dream come true. Whether you're boating and camping or canoeing, cycling, fishing, golfing, hiking, RVing, whitewater rafting, if you've got the time, there is a road trip for you, you know, and you can even do that iconic drive on the dumpster highway as well. So much to see in the Yukon and do all of the TV shows on the Discovery Channel, the gold panning and the jade finding and all of those adventures. That is, uh, that's the wilderness that you are in. And that brings us to the end of our special Canada Day edition. And I wanna thank you for joining me for this travel talk. I hope that something has piqued your interest or you just wanna hear more about it or find out maybe for next year, if it's something you'd like to do, please reach out. It's my privilege to serve you. And please share this with anyone that you think uh, could use some inspiration as well. I'll see you next week.